a prison for women in the Kenyan town of Nyeri. Anne is doing time here for a crime she says she didn't commit. There are many others like her locked up in Kenya. Women prisoners are often viewed as outcasts after they're released. Anne's sentence is almost up, and she's desperate to find a new start in life. The women sleep between 30 and 40 to a room here. A man in Anne's village accused her of criminally neglecting her children. Abandoning the kids, leaving the kids in the hands of another person. Yeah, and then they, that means that I was irresponsible. Abandoning them means that I was irresponsible of doing the, 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 giving them the basic needs and what they need as children. And did you do it? What do you think? No, I didn't, but I just went out to look for a job, so I had to leave the kids with my mom. Anne didn't have a lawyer, so the accusation stood. She was sentenced to a year in prison. I feel that uh, I shouldn't be here. I feel down, I feel that I, all what I've been doing out there is now gone. What I had invested is now gone. So I feel uh, everything to me is it's not as normal, yeah. Anne's fate is not uncommon. And sharing her story with other inmates has made her feel less alone. About a hundred women live here in the prison, painfully far from their children and families. Supporting each other helps them get through this difficult time. In fact, it is enjoyable and we are um, even able to forget what happened. So I just remember it when I'm going to court. When the court time nears, this is the time I, I remember that I'm in jail. But otherwise, I'm able to have, uh, have been able to cope with the situation, and um, I'm a bit comfortable now. Yeah. Spinach and ugali, a cornmeal mush typical of the region. The women eat it three times a day, all year long. There's precious little variety in daily prison life. Relatives are allowed a single 20-minute visit once a month. A Kenyan aid organization also offers training programs for the prisoners. Peter Jege and Julia Mwangi visit the facility every week. So you have all these materials. Number one, you measure 19.5 liters of water. Anne and the other prisoners are learning practical skills here that will help them later after they re-enter society, explains the man from the aid organization. So today we are going we are learning about uh, soap making. Some call it multipurpose soap. It's a soap whereby it is used to clean houses, clean house, uh, clean clothes, and also maybe washing like widow pens, such like. So actually what is happening is trying to explain the materials which are used in making of soap and also the procedure to follow when uh, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are making that uh, detergent. And the prisoners aren't the only ones interested in the lessons. The guards often listen in. Yeah. Even the officers benefit from this program where we usually make the soap to use in our houses for the domestic uses and even for saving. Yeah, we both train the inmates and the other staffs. Our success rate is very high because uh, all the inmates we train here in prison, only four out of a hundred who come back in prison. That means most of, most of them are able to use the skills they learned in the prison to empower their lives and also to use the skills to start uh, income generating activities at home. In just a few weeks, Anne will be released. 
Government-sponsored rehabilitation programs are few and far between. Most are set up and funded by private organizations. For the prison's director, Patrick Alando, the system appears to work just fine. I believe working in partnership with the NGO or any other organization is key. The government also works with other institutions that are able to support its uh, core functions. If you're able to make shampoo, you're able to make bleach or maybe yogurt, that is something you can start immediately that when you leave, uh, you know, you leave prisons, for instance. And this is something you can be able even to train your members of the family to benefit from the same. Not far from the women's prison is the much larger facility for men. It's home to more than 2,000 prisoners, packed together in very crowded conditions. Many are serving life sentences. Most make furniture in the prison's woodworking shop. The inmates receive no wages. Today, the women from the neighboring prison are here for a small ceremony to celebrate the end of the rehabilitation program. Anne is one of the graduates. After being away from their homes, from their community, they have been trained and now are going back to their community where they came from, meaning that we are coming towards the end of rehabilitation program. Anne and her fellow prisoners receive a certificate for completing the training. The hope is that it will help them find work after their release. A few days later, the women are allowed outside the compound for a few hours. There's one final day of training. The prisoners are learning how to work in a garden they've set up. They've planted sweet potatoes and other root vegetables, staple foods in the region. When she gets out, Anne wants to provide for her family as best she can. So what we normally do, we measure like a, a meter width, then the length can, is determined by your, the, the amount of seed you have. Yeah? Then from there you do what? You do the digging. Like Gardening that. is a vital skill that many of the women still have to learn. Most of the inmates who come here, they come from farming areas. Yeah, maybe horticulture, maybe coffee farming, maybe other kind of crops. And uh, we see that uh, most of them who come here, they don't have these skills, especially on how to use the locally available materials around their surroundings to, be, to make their farming better and also cheap. After her release, Anne also wants to show the other women in her village what she's learnt in prison. I'll be proud showing them how I've, I've, what I have come out from jail with. I will feel happy. I will use these skills when I come out of jail to help me in my life and in my lad so that I can get more products. Finally, the big day arrives. <laughs> you are free to go. Thank you. You have done a good job in our facility and I believe now you are going to do a better job for yourself, isn't Thank it? You. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very Goodbye. much. Goodbye. Thank you. Nice day. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. 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 Okay. Bye, Anne. Bye. Nice day. Thank you. Anne didn't tell her family she was getting out today. She was worried that her release might be delayed for some reason. Her village is about an hour's drive away from Nyeri. A couple of days later, Anne's growing accustomed to life at home again. After months in prison, she's back with her children. Getting them ready for school is still a joyous occasion. I've always been there for my kids. I've always been resp responsible, so I don't know what happened that I ended up in, in jail. 
it was a nightmare on my side and I I felt I cried I cried okay bye Anne's fears about her return proved groundless. Her family and neighbours are glad to see her. After their release, many prisoners in Kenya are still marginalised, but in this village, everyone seems to know that Anne spent her time behind bars thinking about the future. <laughs> this afternoon, the former prisoner is seeing people she hasn't met in quite a while. Anne is eager to show them what she learned in prison. Her neighbours don't know anything about making soap, shampoo or yoghurt all on their own. And they're not the only ones Anne wants to impress. In the future, she also wants to sell products she makes herself. Perhaps she'll even be able to set up her own little shop. Her time in prison suddenly seems far, far away. I feel I'm a person who is free and um, let me say, uh, going to jail has made me uh, learn a lot and I've been able to be dependent on my own. By before I went to jail, I was not dependent, but now I'm dependent. Yeah, with my kids, yeah. <laughs> 